this is Umesh History Faculty at Manifest IS and this is the Current Jobs Initiative and as part of this initiative we have started a series on World Heritage Sites of India and we had a thoroughgoing discussion on ancient medieval and modern cultural heritage sites of India and apart from that we also had a discussion about the intangible cultural heritage of India and apart from the intangible cultural heritage we also had a discussion on the martial art of India and as part of this initiative along with every video we have posted two questions in the comment section and some of our students have solved these questions too and manifest always believed in a thoroughgoing question discussion rather than giving a synopsis we always believed in test discussion and as part of our prelims test series also we did the same thing now I we want to discuss these questions which have been posted along with the, uh, the videos and we'll start with this uh, the question discussion subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update the first video is Ajanta and Ellora Caves and this question is which of the following statements is are, are correct about Ajanta Ellora Caves. Ajanta Caves are representative of Mahayana Buddhism alone. This statement is definitely wrong because the earlier Ajanta Caves definitely they represented Hinayana format of Buddhism. Ajanta Caves are exclusively Buddhist but both Mahayana and Hinayana Buddhism. The paints at Ajanta are true frescoes. This is false. In India there are no true frescoes. All frescoes are false frescoes in India. True fresco is a fresco which is drawn on wet wall. Whereas in India, the tradition has always been that the painting has been done on a dry wall. That's why all Indian frescoes are false frescoes. So the answer for this question is D, neither one nor two. Next question we are going to have a look at. Consider the following statements. Uh, Chandrashalas represents the internal outlay of the cave, cave temple. We have discussed this already Okay, as part of the video. Chandrashalas are usually the pillared portico and the huge window that is present on the first floor. Okay, this is how it is planned. This is what is known as Chandrashala and this is the entrance gateway and this Chandrashala is part of the facade architecture. Then apart from that the second statement Kailasana temple at Ellora is constructed in Vaisra style. This is a rather simple statement. It is constructed in Dravidian style with the Shikara, Gopra, all the classical features of Dravidian architecture it has been constructed. So the second statement is wrong. First statement is also wrong. The answer is D neither one not two. Next question which of the following statements either are correct. Uh, Shiva Mahesh Murthy is a representation of the cosmic cycle according to Hindu philosophy. Yes, Shiva Mahesh Murthy image at Elephanta. It contains the formats of Shiva like Bhairava. Okay, then along with that, uh, you have the Shiva in uh, the uh, Mahesh Murthy format. Then along with that, in the Trimurti, one is Mahesh Murthy, one is Bhairava, and the other one is the creator Shiva. So that is how they represent Shristi, Palana, and uh, and uh, destruction Shristi Shristi means creation Palana means maintenance and destruction all the three aspects Bhairava represents the destruction of the temple uh, destruction of the universe so this is the Hindu cosmic cycle and it is represented by the Shiva Mahesh Murthy image then Lakulisa is an yogic avatar of Shiva yes this statement is also correct you see the image of Lakulisa in uh, the elephant cave so see these kind of statements they are very very important because they are usually not known ok let's suppose they have given once a question on um, the various subsects of Jainism ok there you have to know the names ok and Lakulisa apart from being one more name of Shiva it is also the name of the founder of Pashpata sect too so uh, both the statements are correct so answer for this question is C both 1 and 2 Next question, consider the following statements about the UNESCO World Heritage Site Bimbetka. The site holds the relics of man from Paleolithic to medieval times. See, relics means relics are any human belongings. It does not mean that relics are bones. So human belongings are very well represented from Paleolithic time to medieval times. In Bimbetka case, the site has been dis discovered by V.S. Vakankar. Okay, this is part of NCRT textbook itself. V.S. Vakankar is the person who has for the first time excavated these caves and brought to light these caves and their paint then this, it is situated in the Ratapani Wildlife Sanctuary. This is a geographical based question. Definitely it is situated in the Ratapani Wildlife Sanctuary of Madhya Pradesh. So the answer for this question is all the three statements are correct. D, 1, 2 and 3. Then consider the following statements about the representational forms in early Buddhism. Jati of Buddha is represented with Maya and Lotus flower. Okay, There are very very important events in Buddha's life history. Particularly the Sanchi Stupa. It represents all these iconography without actually representing Buddha. It is an uniconic Stupa. So, Jati of Buddha is represented with Maya and Lotus. Jati is the birth of Buddha and it is represented by uh, the sleeping Maya on a lotus flower that shows that Buddha is being born. Then, apart from that, there are many life events of Buddha like Avakranti. Avakranti is a conception of Buddha. The event of Avakranti or conception of Buddha, it has been represented in the format of white elephant. 
then uh, mahabhinishkramana is a buddha's renunciation mahabhinishkramana is represented by a bridled horse it is not represented by a stupa then his uh, nirvana is represented by a bodhi tree then his mahabhin uh, mahaparinirvana is represented by a stupa mahabhinishkramana it is represented by a bridled horse so the first statement is correct and the second one is wrong so the answer for this question is a so, i'm sorry the answer for this question is a Next, which of the following statements about the World Heritage Site Sanchi Stupa is around currently? It holds the largest Buddhist Stupa in the world. See, this is a, a very false statement and false perception too because the world's largest Buddhist Stupa according to the diameter of the Stupa is the Anuradhapura Stupa which is present in Sri Lanka and when it comes to the Buddhist complex too, Borobudur is the biggest uh, Buddhist complex in the entire world which is located in Indonesia. It is not present in India. And then, Ashoka's four lion capital found at Sanchi is used as an emblem of India today. See, there are two four lion capitals of Ashoka. One is the Tharnath Stupa and the second one is the Sanchi Stupa. Sanchi Stupa it is broken and it is not a representative of the Buddhist of the Indian emblem. The Indian emblem is Sarnath Buddhist Stupa without the lotus filial. Without the lotus filial. So the answer for this question is a D. I'm sorry. The answer for this question is D is the answer. Okay. Next one. Which of the following historical dynasties are, are associated with the World Heritage Site Nalanda? These kind of questions are quite possible. And here when it comes to Nalanda, it started becoming more and more prominent in the late ancient period. In the early ancient period, Nalanda is not a prominent Buddhist site at all. Later day, with from the time of Guptas, earlier it was a small shrine and no direct princely rule is associated with a small shrine which is present at Nalanda. During the Guptan period, when Kumara Gupta established the Nalanda University, that's when it started becoming more and more prominent. So, Mauryan and Kushanas both they are not associated with this both Guptans and Palans are associated with this the answer for this question is a C3 and 4 C3 and 4 next question consider the following statements about the Bodh Gaya Mahabodhi temple contains Buddha's images in uniconic format this is wrong because Mahabodhi temple it contains Buddha's image in iconic format very clearly it is represented in iconic format because Mahabodhi temples has seen many reconstructions during later day even though it was initially established by Ashoka Maurya during the Mauryan Empire period but later day it has seen many reconstructions during Kushana, Gupta, Pala, various ruling dynasties they have continuously renovated the site so that is the reason why it has iconic format of Buddha because Kushanas are particularly Mahayana Buddhists they represent Buddha in iconic format only the Hinayana sect does not represent Buddha in an iconic format that too in earlier times then the foundation for the temple is laid by Mauryan Emperor Ashoka so the answer for this question is B two only ok definitely the Vajrasana the early uh, stupa at uh, uh, at Bhudgaya all of these things are represent or uh, founded by or the foundation stone has been laid by Ashoka next answer the following statements about the Sun Temple at Konark it is known as White Pagoda see I think if you watch the video these questions are rather simple it is not known as White Pagoda White Pagoda is Jagannath Puri temple which is present in Puri, Puri. the Konark Sun Temple it is known as a Black Pagoda because of the color of the stone which has been used as part of this construction style the temple hosts the tallest Shikara in India today so this is a false statement because the Shikara of the Jagannath Puri temple it has a Sorry, in the, the Kunar temple it has uh, fallen because of its own weight. Okay, today we don't have a shikara at this, and at best you can see the uh, Pamasana style mandapas which are associated with the central shrine. But the central shikara it did not survive. Okay, now if we have a discussion about the tallest uh, vimana or shikara of India, it is present in Chaturbhuj temple, uh, Chaturbhuj temple in uh, Madhya Pradesh, which has been constructed during medieval periods. So it is not an ancient construction. During medieval period, nearly 300 feet, more than 300 feet, the temple um, vimana is present, which is uh, known as the Chaturbhuj temple Chaturbhuj temple and apart from that uh, during ancient period the tallest uh, uh, vimana is present at Brihadishwaralaya Brihadishwaralaya not uh, the Konark sun temple but the shikara is uh, not surviving today so we cannot comment much upon it when it comes to the gopras the largest or tallest gopra of India is present in uh, the Ranganatha Swami temple Ranganatha Swami temple uh, of uh, Chidambaram okay Sri Rangam, not Chidambaram, Ranganatha Swami Temple at Sri Rangam hosts the largest Raya Gopuram, okay, largest Raya, tallest Raya Gopuram. And when it comes to the temple complexes of India, the largest temple complex is the temple complex of Sri Rangam, okay, the same uh, Sri Rangam temple, it is considered to be the largest temple complex of India, too, okay. Next one, so the answer for this question is the second statement is wrong, the first statement is also wrong, so D, neither one or two is the answer. Then which of the following locations have the Sun Temple in them? 
see this is one question which has been asked by UPSC too. See this shows the diversity from which the UPSC is picking questions. It is not being confined to just one area and a similar question has been asked by me and I have provided the link also below so that you will have a look at the various sun temples of India. Arsavalli at Srikakulam it contains the Surya Narayana Swami temple which is a very very famous temple which is present in Srikakulam of Andhra Pradesh. The Konark in Odisha it is also a sun temple. Modera in Gujarat, I think we have discussed as part of Suranki architecture too. Modera in Gujarat is also a sun temple and Marthand in Kashmir. It is a very famous uh, sun temple okay, which is present in Marthand in Kashmir. So the answer for this question is D1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay, You might have seen this Marthand Kashmir temple if you have watched the movie Haider. Okay, In that uh, there is a song which has been uh, picturized at this Marthand Kashmir temple. Okay, It is a very famous temple but it is ru in complete ruins today. In complete ruins today. Then consider the following statements about the Kajraho group of temples. The Chauset Yogini temple at Kajraho inspired the parliament building at Delhi. Okay, this statement is very wrong because there is one more Chauset temple, Chauset Yogini temple which is present at Morina okay, in Madhya Pradesh. This is the temple which has inspired the parliament architectural style. Have a look at this. This exactly looks like the Indian parliament style. Okay, in fact, um, uh, Herbert Baker and his associate Lutings, both of them are inspired by this Chauset Yogini temple in planning the parliament structure in India. So, Chauset Yogini temple at Morina is the temple which inspired the parliament construction. This year there has been a lot of renovation in the Indian parliament. That is the reason why this parliament and its inspiration are important. It is South Chauset Yogini temple at Morina. It is not the Chauset Yogini temple at Kajraho. Next, uh, when it comes to, even though there is a Chauset Yogini temple at Kajraho, it is not the one which inspired this parliament building. Then Kajraho group of temples are exclusively Hindu temples. This is also false because there are Jaina temples, Parshanath temple is present. So the answer for this question is D. Consider the following statements about the World Heritage Site Rani Kawab. It is constructed in the Maru, uh, Maru Gurjar style. Yes, it is constructed in the Maru Gurjar style uh, during the period of Solankis in Gujarat who have constructed many other temples in this Maru Gurjar style like Modera Sun Temple. Along with the Modera Sun Temple, the Mount Abu temples which are built in uh, for uh, the Jaina monks and uh, for the worship of Jains. That is also built in this uh, same Maru Gujar style. It is a very famous style. The well is mainly de dedicated to the lots of uh, gods of Shiva Pantheon. So this is wrong. I have discussed in my video too. It, uh, the well has been completely dedicated to Vishnu and his uh, 10 avatars. So the second statement is also wrong. The first statement is right. So the answer for this question is, sorry, I'm sorry. A is the answer for this question. I'll change in the slides. Okay. Next, which of the following statements is are correct about the historical site Mahabalipuram or Mamalapuram? Cave temples at this site are called Mandapas. Yes, this statement is very, very right. The cave temples at, uh, at Mahabalipuram, particularly the Palavan cave temples are known as Mandapas. We have discussed about it. Show temple has Gopras on the entrance gateway. See, the show temple, it is a classical representation of all the Dravida features and even it contains the Gopras at the entrance gateway. Even the Kailasana temple at Kanchi also has the same thing. So, both the statements are correct. Okay, so the answer for this question is both 1 and 2. Next, consider the following statements about the Cholan Temple architecture. They contain separate chambers for subsidiary deities. This is very, very right. The subsidiary deities who are associated with the main deity. Okay, main deity, let's suppose he is Shiva. Then the subsidiary deities like Ganesha and Kumara, their representations and their shrines are also present in the temple complex. Okay, this uh, representation of uh, the other subsidiary deities in the temple complex, it evolved into a further form called Amman shrine, okay, wherein the, uh, the chief consort of the god presiding deity is represented in a separate temple during Vijayanagara period. The Amman shrine is not present during uh, Cholan period. The Amman shrine is a representation of Vijayanagara period, but subsidiary shrines for the associate deities is started from the Cholan empire. They started the practice of constructing the mandapas in court like format called Ratha format. This is very, very important. And uh, I think we have discussed as part of Airavateshwara temple, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, that the entire temple complex and the mandapas, they have been built in the format of a car. Cart. A cart because it uh, they wanted to represent the temple chariot in stone. Okay, in stone that is the reason why they started this construction in Ratha format. So the answer for this question is a C, both one and two. Next one. Which of the following is our, our architectural features of the Vesra temple? Okay, first one is a Prakara wall. Okay, the outside wall, apsidal plan. Okay, Reka Shikara, apsidal, I think you know, half elliptical, Reka Shikara. Then along with that, Sukhanasi. Sukhanasi, okay. I think I have discussed about all these features. Some of the temples, because Vesra is an admixture of both classical Dravida and 
Nagara styles. It contains one or the other temple, it contains all the features of Dravida and Nagara. So you need not uh, resist yourself whenever these kind of questions comes. You select all possible features because all of them are part of Vesra architectural style. I have talked about it in the video too that Vesra is a mule style which is an interbreeding style. So that is the reason why you can very easily without any doubt select all of them. Sukhanasi is the extension of the main sanctum sanctorum. Main sanctum sanctorum, the gopra present on the sanctum sanctorum, it is extended to uh, to the front a little that is known as a Sukhanasi. So the, all of them are correct. D1, 2, 3 and 4. Next, consider the following statements about the temple complex at Patadakal. The temples here are constructed by the Chalukyas of Kalyani. See, this uh, Chalukyan dynasty is a little confusing for students. So that is the reason why I have put a slide on Chalukyas. Okay. There are four main branches of Chalukyas. There are many others, but these four are very prominent. The Chalukyas of Badami who rule between 6th and 8th century. The famous rulers like Pulakesin are part of this. And they are the ones who are associated with Aihole, Badami and Patadakal. All these are three sites, okay, which are very, very significant culturally, all of them. And they form the basis for Vesra architecture in a Dravidian region. They are, are part of the same thing, okay, which are known as the Chalukyas of Badami. Then the second one is Chalukyas of Kalyani. The Chalukyas of Badami were replaced by Rashtrakutas, who were further replaced 200 years by the Chalukyas of Kalyani, who belonged to 10th and 12th century. Their capital was at Basava Kalyan of today, okay, Kalyani or Basava Kalyan of today. They are also known as Western Chalukyas. They are also known as Western Chalukyas. And they were uh, the people who are associated with the Dodda Vesappa temple at Dumbal. Okay, these are the people who are associated with it, not very prominent uh, ruling dynasty. Then Chalukyas of Vengi is the next one, between 7th to 12th century. Okay, 7th to 12th century, the Chalukyas of Vengi are present, they are also known as Eastern Chalukyas with their capital at Vengi. They are present in Andhra Pradesh region, in fact they are direct cousins of Chalukyas of Badani, Badami, both of them are related. Because of their capital at Vengi, they are given the name of Chalukyas of Vengi. Then Chalukyas of Gujarat, Chalukyas of Gujarat are very very significant, they are also known as Solankis and they were present between 940 to 1244 CE. And the very famous and the capital was at Anhilavada. Anhilavada and the temples that we talked about, the Rani Kabav, Modera in Gujarat, all of these temples are associated with this Chalukyas of Gujarat, who are also known as Solanki Chalukyas. Solanki Chalukyas, and they are the ones who were defeated Muhammad of Gur okay, when he was coming to India from Gujarat region, particularly a king by the name of Mulraj. He belonged to the same Chalukyan line. Okay, so the answer for this question, uh, the first statement is wrong because it is associated with Chalukyas of Badami. The temples of the complex are dedicated both to Hinduism and Jainism. So the second statement is correct. So the answer for this question is B. Okay, I think I have talked about it in the video. Of the all nine temples, two are dedicated to Jainism. Okay, next consider the following statements about the historic city of Hampi. The constructions of the site exclusively follow typical Dravidian architecture. This is very wrong because uh, the uh, Virupaksha, not Virupaksha temple, the Vitala temple which is present in Hampi, it follows the Vesra architectural style. Because Vijayanagara style, it represented the intermixture of imperial Cholan and Chalukyas of Badami style, Chalukyas of Kalyani style, Rashtrakuta style, all these styles are integrated together in a Vijayanagara style. That is the reason why the temples are here, particularly uh, the Vitala temple which is present here, it is constructed in a Vesara format. Then the city is established by the brothers Harihara and Bukaraya. Yes, it is established by Harihara and Bukaraya. I think you know about the story, I talked about the story too, that both of them, they were part of Muhammad bin Tughlaq's troops and they were converted to Islam in Delhi and later day when they were sent to south in order to quell a rebellion with the help of sage Vidyaranya they converted back to Hinduism and they established their capital and on the banks of a river uh, Kaveri which is known as the uh, the Hampi city or Vijayanagara city okay so the answer for this question is B okay two only is the answer next question consider the following statement is uh, not a foreign visitor to Vijayanagara empire okay even Batuta it is a rather simple question. All of them. Domingo Pace is very important. Abdur Rajak is very important. Varathima is also a very important foreign traveler to India. Whereas Ibn Batuta, he did not directly visit the Vijayanagara Empire. Okay, he did not directly visit the Vijayanagara Empire. He, in fact, he visited the Mohammed bin Tughlaq's Empire, but not the Vijayanagara Empire. The answer for this question is C. Okay, consider the following statements about the Islamic architecture in India. The first true arch is erected in Alai Darwaj. This is very right. True arch and true dome technique, both of them, I discussed as part of my video too. They were first uh, tried in Alai Darwaja, which is an uh, entrance gateway which was built by Alauddin Kilji after his victory over Gujarat region. Then Kutub Binar is constructed in commemoration of Kutubuddin Ayabak's establishment of Delhi Sultanate. This is wrong. It is built in commemoration of uh, what? It is built in commemoration of Kutubuddin Bakhtiar Khaki, who is a uh, Sufi Chisti Saint. So the answer for this question is 
one only. No, so the answer is A. Okay, I will change the answer. I think uh, there has been some uh, misprinting. Then, which of the following structures is are part of the Kutub complex? Adaidinka Jopra. Adaidinka Jopra is present in, uh, in Ajmer, even though it is also one of the earliest constructions of. Uh, uh, earliest constructions of Delhi Sultanate, it is not present in Delhi. Iron Pillar of Mehroli is definitely it is part of the Delhi Sultanate complex and Alay Darwaj. All of these things are part of the Delhi Sultanate com the Delhi Kutub Minar complex. So the answer for this question is B. Next one. I consider the following statements about Mughal India. Okay, Ibadat Khan is situated in Agra Fort. This statement is wrong because it is situated at Fateh Fort Sikri. Bulan Darwaza is an entrance archway located at Fateh Fort Sikri. This statement is correct. So the answer for this question is B2 only. Next question. Which of the following sites is or are part of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites sites of Hill Forts of Rajasthan? Okay, Hill Forts of Rajasthan are very very important. There are nearly total 6 Hill Forts which have been selected by the World Heritage Site. Just you need to have be familiar with that. So the first statement, Junagad Fort. Okay, Junagad is the old fort which is present in Bikaner. It is not a Hill Fort. That is the reason why it has not been included as part of UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Amir Fort, it is present in Jaipur and it is part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is a, a Hill Fort. And then Jaisalmer Fort is also included as part of this. So the answer for this question is 2 and 3. The answer is B, 2 and 3 and D. Then consider the following about medieval ornamentation tradition. Medieval ornamentation. Nastalik is a format of mural painting. This is wrong because Nastalik is a format of calligraphy along with the Kufi Dugra, Nasak and Nastalik is the fourth technique of uh, uh, Fourth technique of calligraphy. Then usage of multicolored marbles is called opex sectile style. Yes, usage of multicolored marbles in in, in a building for uh, ornamentation is known as opex sectile. You might be knowing always uh, talk about Pietro Dura, but apart from Pietro Dura, there are many other decorative styles too. As part of our uh, video, we have discussed it. Please have a look at the video. You'll find more decoration styles. Okay. Uh, so the answer for this question is B2 only. Okay. Which of the following architectural features form part of Mughal architecture? Okay, Guldasta, Pishtak, Arch and Tadu panels. All of them are present. Okay, particularly the Guldasta and Pishtak Arch, they are present from the time of Muin's tomb. But Dadu panels, they were integrated during the time of Taj Mahal. Okay, I think I have talked about them. The attached spires to the central building are known as Guldastas. Then along with that, Pishtak Arch is the pointed arch which is present. Okay, pointed arch, horseshoe pointed arch. Okay, then Dadu panels are the panels which are present at the bottom here. Okay. So all of these are part of Taj Mahal too. So the answer for this question is D1, 2 and 3. Next, Pink City of Jaipur is recently uh, selected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Which of the following historical monuments is our part of this city? Okay, so this is also very important because it has been selected last year. Okay, after preliminary in June 2019, it has been selected. So very, very important. Which are the historical buildings which are present as part of this Pink City of Jaipur is a, a very possible question this year. First one foremost, Jantar Mantar. Yes, apart from five other sites, Jantar Mantar is present and very well preserved in Jaipur. Then Hava Mahal is also present. Okay, I think I have shown you the Hava Mahal with all its Oriel windows, okay, which are extending from the balcony, which is also part of this. Then Shish Mahal. Shish Mahal is part of Amir Fort. It is also part of Jaipur. Then Jahaj Mahal. Jahaj Mahal, there are two Jahaj Mahals. One is constructed during the time of Lodis in Delhi and the other Jahaj Mahal is present at Manda. Okay, Man Mandwa at Manda, not Mandwa, Manda at Manda. So, Jahaj Mahal is not part of the city of Jaipur. So, 1, 2, and 3 is the answer. So, the answer for this question is a C. Next question the historic city of Ahmedabad. Okay, I think we have discussed this. It is a walled city, definitely. Okay, the entire city has been walled in walled together. Or the Jama Masjid in the city shows a typical Hindu decorative motifs. This is part of Gujarat architectural style. All the mosques here, okay, along with the Champne Pavgada mosque too. The same thing, Jama Masjid is constructed. It is called a temple in a mosque complex. Okay, then the housing pattern in this town follows a unique pattern called pole. Okay, we talked about Kirgis, pole, uh, Havelis. All of these things are the architectural features of Gujarat uh, Ahmedabad house construction style. So that is the reason why this statement is also correct. The answer for this question is D. All the statements are correct. 1, 2, 3. See, look at these uh, questions. Okay, uh, UPSC will traditionally uh, or it has always been surprising the students. It has always surprised the students. The basic reason is that the students don't pay enough attention to the issues in news, one thing, and they should have a genuine interest for history and culture. Then only they will be able to solve these kind of questions. Otherwise, they seem like out of box questions. With our genuine interest in history itself, we started the World Heritage Series site because they are internationally recognized and they are one of the unique aspects of Indian culture. So, as part of that itself, we did the entire discussion. Next one, when it comes to modern architecture. 
the ensemble of Victorian Gothic and Art Deco buildings in Mumbai. Very very simple question. The site includes buildings around Oval Maidan and Marine Drive. Okay, I talked about it. Oval Maidan and Marine Drive, both of them, they represent the transition from 19th century architecture in Victorian Gothic to the Art Deco architecture. Uh, in 20th century then it includes iconic buildings like Raja Bai Tower which has been constructed in Victorian Gothic style and Eros Cinema is constructed in Art Deco style so all of these features we discussed about so the answer for this question is C both 1 and 2 next one so which of the following pairs of architects and their constructions are correctly matched okay I have gone a little beyond the video too the first one is Herbert Baker low cost housing in Kerala low cost housing in Kerala is taken up by a person by the name of Lowry Baker okay who is known as Mahatma of Indian architecture but it is not Herbert Baker. Herbert Baker along with Lutins, they are both associated with the Delhi Capital Complex, the Parliament Building, the Rashtrapati Bhavan, not uh, low cost housing in Kerala. So the first statement is wrong. Lee Corbusier, open hands in Chandigarh. I think I have talked about it. It is a rather simple question. The Capital Complex and the open hand monuments, the, they were built by Lee Corbusier. Then Frederick William Stevens. Victoria Terminus, yes, Victoria Terminus has been planned and constructed by this person by the name of Frederick William Stevens. So the answer for this question is a C, 2 and 3 only. The first one is wrong. Which of the following uh, features, this is part of the intangible cultural heritage questions. Which of the following features describe the Chahu dance of Eastern India? It is a dance form where wearing the mask is compulsory. This is wrong because Mayur Banja Chahu, out of the three Chahus, Porulia, Mayur Banja and uh, Parulia and Mayur Banj, okay. Mayur Banj Chahu, it does not require, I uh, can't place the third name, okay, but it is fine. The Mayur Banj Chahu, it does not use any, uh, any form of uh, masks, okay. Then this dance form is part of the tangible cultural heritage of India. It is part of intangible cultural heritage, rather simple question, simple statement. This is a dance form which includes martial arts too, yes. Pariya Khanda, okay, I think as part of martial art tradition too, I have discussed about it. Pariya Khanda is a uh, uh, Pariya Khanda is a martial tradition of the same regions, Jharkhand, West Bengal uh, and Odisha and these regions uh, martial art dance forms are also included as part of Chahu dance. So the answer for this question is only 3 only. So the answer for this question is I think I have made a mistake here to C is the answer. Okay, I will change the slides. If you download the slides definitely there will be correct answers. Okay, C is the answer. Then which of the following statements is are correct about folk theatre form of Ram Leela? It is exclusively based on Ramcharita Manas of Tulsidas. This is wrong because it is based on both Ramcharita Manas of Tulsidas and Ramayana of Valmiki too. Then it is part of the intangible cultural heritage of India. Very right. It is performed during the festival of Diwali and ends with the ritual burning of huge effigy of Ravana. This is wrong because this is performed during the festival of Dashara. Okay, the answer for this question is a C. Consider the following statements about the traditional martial art forms of India. Inbuan is a form of wrestling native to the people of Manipur. No, Inbuan is not Manipuri. It is in fact a martial art form of uh, Mizoram region. Mizoram region, not Manipur. Inbuan is fought with leather swords and shields. This is also wrong. Okay, leather of it is a fought. In fact, it is a wrestling uh, contest where there will be a belt on the belly of the person or the waist of the person and uh, the people have to lift each other up and throw each other. So, it is, does not include any swords and shields. So, the second statement is also wrong. First statement is also wrong. The answer for this question is D, neither one nor two. See, this has been a very important question in the past five years. We have seen uh, questions on two martial arts of India, two martial arts of India, of India. So, that is the reason why I have done a separate video on the same. Next question, we will have a look at which of the following statements is are correct? Thoda is a martial art form of Uttar Pradesh. No, it is part of Himachal Pradesh, not Uttar Pradesh. It is an unarmed combat format. Okay, yes, definitely. No, 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 it is not an unarmed combat format. I'm sorry. It is a combat format which uses bows and arrows. Okay, bows and arrows both are used. It is a tradition which is based on Mahabharata from the Mahabharata times. So the answer for this question is both the statements are wrong. Himachal Pradesh and it is a armed combat format. So the answer for this question is D. This finishes the discussion on the questions which have been posted as part of the uh, culture series. Next, after this, we are going to start a series on government schemes on India uh, as part of our current jobs initiative too. In the second leg, I will be taking up the government schemes and programs. There also, we will follow the same format. And once again, thank you for watching our videos and subscribe to Manifest IAS for more such interesting content. Thank you.